All right, y'all, let's get right into it. My first day of prison, actual prison, at my home home jail, okay? So we get woken up about three in the morning. We're at Camp Hill. That's classification for Pennsylvania. So they wake us up, you know, people from different blocks all going down the F block. That's where we get changed into our jumpsuits and stuff like that. So we come down, and uh, they got all our names written down with little bags, right? So I go over, I find mine, says what jail I'm going to do. It's H-O-U, which is Housedale, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. Get my bag, go over, and all I know about Housedale was what they've been telling me at Camp Hill. Yo, it's gladiator school. If you're going to see action, you're going to stab people. You're going to get stabbed. That's how it is up there. So I'm like, I'm shook. You know, I'm like, fuck. Like, but all I know is I didn't want to go to Pine Grove because I was young. I was 18. Pine Grove's a juvenile jail. I'm not no juvenile. But they like to send anybody that's under 21 up to Pine Grove if they don't have a high school diploma or a GED. But I had mine. So I was still like, damn, I don't want to go up there. Because when you go up there with 14, 15-year-olds, they do not give a fuck. They're the most reckless motherfuckers in the whole shit. So I'm like, damn, I'm not trying to go up to the Grove. Like, I would rather go to Housedale. They're like, nah, bro, you better. I'm like, nah, I'd rather go to Housedale. So thankfully, I was going to Housedale. My just 26 years. I could have went anywhere. Housedale's only an hour 45 away from my house, though. So I'm like, bet, that's perfect. So I uh, get on the bus. I remember very specifically, they had some Fat Joe fucking album playing the whole time. And I was like, okay, like, you know, you get a little like early 2000s vibe before prison. You know what I mean? It's just cool, whatever. We get up there. They put us all in the tank, right? They call us out one at a time. We change into our browns. They give us our stuff, but not everything because you get sh shipped in the mail and some of it comes, you know, on the bus. They don't have room for everything on the bus. So, uh, Sitting there, go through all my stuff. I'm like, okay, everything's here. You know, sit there, everybody waiting in the intake in the intake uh tank. So like I said, everyone's sitting in the tank waiting to go onto the blocks and stuff, right? So finally they're like, all right, guys, come on, we're gonna go out to the block. So we start walking, we come out of R and D, start walking, you know, real casually. They call a yard out. I could hear it on the loudspeakers, right? So the way the jail's set up, it's on two halves, right? You got A, B, and C block on one half of the jail, which was the north side, then on the south side you have D E F G K I and J. So there's like a million blocks on the south side, but only three on the north side, right? Because one of the blocks was a drug program, which was G block. K block was the trailers, which was like um, good behavior, um, very minimum security for that part of the jail. Um, I block was sex offenders block. So like they're all like separate blocks that don't really like come into population like that. So it didn't really matter. But F block from the south side will come the yard with the north side. So as we're walking down the walkway to go to C block, F block's coming around the fence this way. So I see dude go running, right? I'm like, oh, he must be trying to go get a basketball or something. I see dude running behind him. I'm like, he must want next. Like, dude jumps on his back. Shank like this long. Starts stabbing him all on the side of his neck, side of his face, right? 17 times, right? While I'm sitting here like this with my box, like, Immediate thought, I'm never making it out of prison alive. I'm never going to make it out of prison alive. So we get to C block. They have these old head lifers that are like telling us like how the jail works and stuff like that. And uh, I literally asked one of them, like, Yo, how often does somebody get stabbed up here? Like, a couple times a week. I'm like, a couple times a week. I have like hundreds of weeks to do, which means that's thousands of stabbings. There's only 2,000 people here. Chances are I might take one of these stabbings or have to stab somebody one of these times. Like, I guess we will see. But I'm shook. I'm 18. Like, I'm scared as fuck. Like, I wasn't built like that. But, um, so I come out to the yard. And I know one of my homies from the street is up there. So I find him on the fence. He's on the other side of the jail. So we start talking and shit. And uh, he tells me, like, yo, these people from out the way, too. So I start talking to them. They're on my side. So we're sitting there talking on the fence. And my homie, like, grabs me by the back and, like, pushes me away. And I'm like, yo, like, what's good? This is the same guy that stole my chicken skin, by the way. Fuck you, Chris. And uh, he pushes me away. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He's like, yo, look. I turn around. And literally right behind me, there's two dudes on the ground wrestling, fighting. I'm like, bro. He's like, dude, you got you, you got to be more observant. I'm like, bro, I was talking. Like, how am I supposed to know? He's like, dude, you got to be more observant. So that was the first thing I did. I just started watching everything. Okay, I see the way motherfuckers move. Okay, he's over here talking to him. And then this happens. I know that somebody, you know what I mean, that's making some shit happen. Let me just stay the fuck out of their way. 
you know, but it makes it a lot easier just to watch everything going on. And everybody in prison watches everything going on. By the end of my sentence, I could literally be talking to you over here and know that they're fighting over there without even turning. Just by the way these people are looking and acting. I don't have to look to know that they're rumbling back there. I barely have to look to know who it is at this point. Because that's how it gets. You get so accustomed to the way things are in there. Like, you get this dulled sense of, like, reality where it's like, oh, this shit makes sense. There's nothing normal about just watching people get stabbed and beat up all day. Nothing normal about it at all. But when you're in that environment, you get used to it. Like if I was walking out here in the street and I saw somebody getting beat up, I'd probably be like, oh shit, they get knocked. I'd sit there and watch. As soon as it was over, I'd just keep it pushing. That that's literally what happened. One of my homies came up. It was about four months before I went home. One of my homies from the street came up. We're walking the track. I'm like breaking down how shit is in prison and shit like that. Mind you, this is someone I used to be around on the street. So he's like, damn, like it's weird to see you in this environment and you a lot different, like you a lot more, you know on your shit and I was like you gotta be so we're walking I see some shit start to happen I'm like look they about to start fighting over here they about to jump dude so he's like where he looks boom they jump dude right everybody in the whole yard is watching everybody stops when something happens in the yard movement stops the only movement being people moving towards it a little bit to get a better view but everything just kind of stops basketball games stop my be at the fence everybody's just watching right as soon as it's over as soon as the cops tackle it's over Everybody just disperses and keeps it pushing and keeps doing what they're doing. And it's so weird to see how everybody in the jail can go from watching one thing to never talk about it again. It's just, it's it's weird. You know what I mean? But like I said, it, I got a fucking hair in my mouth. It's just something that you get accustomed to in there. And that doesn't make it normal. That doesn't make it okay. But that's just how it is. Like most of the time in prison, people only fighting over it fighting or stabbing people over a couple things, right? Like s severe disrespect, which doesn't really happen like that. Most people are pretty respectful to other people. You're not just an outright dickhead to people most of the time in there. Everybody's kind of got a level of respect for each other because we all in there. Besides for the predators, we don't give a fuck about them. Um, money. Money be the biggest thing. Money is always, the, always something to do with an issue. You owe somebody money, somebody owes you money this person owes your homie money he got in a fight so now you're fighting his friend like females that shit happens a lot <clears throat> oh you fucked my bitch when we was home stuff like that because like even just like the language in there is different like you say stuff in there that you don't say out here like you can't say out here like i came home you can't say the f word you can't say the r word that's 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 shorthand in there for anything that's just how it is. You know what I mean? But that doesn't make it socially acceptable. That's just that environment. That's the way that it is. Like, it's nothing to anybody to be talking like that. But when you come home and you realize, like, oh, damn, people don't talk like this out here. You don't talk like that. The only thing you're not saying in there is the N-word if you white. That's it. You will get your hand. They, people will put hands on you. But, like, that's how it should be. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, it, it's just the work. Yeah, it's just a beating, too. You know what I mean? But... I'm not trying to ramble on too long. I'm trying to make all these all these prison stories like eight to ten minutes so that it's enough enough for y'all to have a full story and intriguing enough for y'all to watch, but not 30 minutes where you're like, all right, bro, like you're burning me out. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to make it like eight to ten minutes. You know, I'm right now I think I'm gonna post every day. Right now. Because it doesn't it's not hard for me to post right now because I don't have to edit. You know, I have to edit this like a little bit, just one clip to the other. But that's really simple. Like, I know how to do that. But I'm not going in and putting music behind stuff and putting pictures in, like, halfway. Like, I don't know all that, all those tricks of the trade yet. Once I do, yeah, I'll probably scale it back to three or four times a week. But for right now, I put one or two up on YouTube every day. If you guys are going to watch them, just make sure you guys drop your comments. If you guys aren't subbed to me, please do. I would appreciate it. You already know. Um, and uh, is there anything? Oh, yeah, fuck TikTok. We already know. You guys have a great day, man.